All right, welcome back to Sports Betting Truth's intro to power rating series. This is video number two, and we're going to pick up right where we left off at the end of video number one. Now, if you didn't watch video number one, that's okay. In the description below this video, I have links to a couple documents. One are the full macros from the last video, and the other one is a Excel spreadsheet of the full NFL schedule from 2019. That way, you don't have to create your own schedule, and also you have all the macros from the previous video ready to go, just in case you didn't either watch the video and didn't follow along, or you're starting out with this video and didn't watch video number one. Both of those things are ready to go so you can pick up with me right where I'm starting off in this video. However, if this is your first video and you're copy and pasting the macro and everything for the first time, you will need to set up your spreadsheet to look like mine. So this video, the difference between the last one and the first one is that this video is all about margin. The last video is all about wins and losses. This one's about margin where only margin matters. Winning and losing doesn't matter. How much you beat your opponent or lost to your opponent by is what matters. A lot of people will say this is a better way to predict the quality of a team than simply wins and losses. And there's some truth to that statement, I would say. But ultimately, it's up to winning and losing. That's what ultimately matters in sports. So margin is a good predictor of the quality of a team. But when it comes to winning games, well, that's up in the air. But probably the best known example of a power rating system that just uses margin is Jeff Sagarin's pure points method. So from here on out, I'll be calling this model pure points. It's probably not programmed exactly like he programs his methods, but the concept is the same. The only thing that matters here is going to be margin. So if you remember the last video, we had five different tabs. You can delete this tab that has the regression analysis. You wanna keep this one, but you wanna get rid of all these right here. We can dump that for now. Just keep the location, away, home, away score, and home score. For the team averages tab, uh, honestly, we can get rid of everything. Uh, we can fill this all back in. Or you can create a new tab, it's up to you. Uh, we can get rid of this for now. And league averages, uh, let's see, we can, we can clear. So what we're gonna do here is we are going to clear this column right here and we're gonna call this margin. Remember, only margin matters, not wins and losses, right? And we're gonna rename this college average margin diff. This one's gonna be called round one marge diff, round two marge diff, and there we go. I guess we'll just leave that column blank. And right here, this one's gonna be called margin, get rid of that one, marge diff. I would get rid of the columns and everything, but we're just gonna change our macros, so we don't wanna update the uh, cell positions in our macros and everything, we're just gonna edit this one. So if you want to, you can create a separate Excel document and keep the last one, the ELO method, and copy and paste that and make a new one, the margin method, that will have the same structure and everything, only uh, using a different system. That way we don't have to go in and edit the cell positions in the macro. All right, so there's really not much to this. This video should be a little bit shorter because all we're really doing is editing our last macro. So the first macro, if you remember, was raw calculate, where we calculated the raw win percentage of every team for the season. So we're gonna do the same thing, only calculate the margin difference in all their games instead of their winning percentage. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're going to add two new lines below the away score and home score variables. The first one will be away diff equals away score minus home score, obviously. And this one will be home diff equals home score minus away score. So those are just the margin differences for the two teams. And because we're not determining whether they won or lost, we can get rid of this if statement right here and actually get rid of that as well. Bring this over here, bring this up. So this, this line right here, column four in a way lookup will remain the same, but this one we're gonna change this to two that to two, and then instead of plus one, it's going to be plus away diff. And then we're gonna do the same thing down here. Change this one to four. Whoops, my bad, get rid of this. Get rid of this one. And then change this to away diff, or wait, home diff. And there we go. So we're gonna append to that column two the average margin differential, a rolling average. And then we also got to append the league average as well. So remember, we don't need the if statement to check to see if a team won. So we 
So we can copy and paste that. And what we're going to do here is sheet two dot cells. Remember the league averages tab. We want to add to column two. So sheet three dot cells two two dot value and three two dot value equals sheet three dot cells two two dot value plus home diff. Remember home is in column two two. And then same thing right here. We can just copy and paste that and change this number to three. Remember row three where away is and then away diff. And from there, we don't really need to change anything because for column five on the team averages, the average margin diff, we're calculating the average margin differential for their games. And we don't need to change anything. I mean, the variable says wins, but it's still just picking up whatever is in column two and dividing it by four, which is the games column. And that's not going to change. So that should be all we need to change. So let's run the macro and make sure it works. All right, this is still formatted as a percentage, but apart from that, it's, we just need to change that to a number. Let's do two decimal places, and there we go. So the Packers, total of 18 games, won by 51 points total, divided by 18. They won their average game by about 2.83 points. The Redskins, on the other hand, wow, that's bad. All right, minus 10.56, but not as bad as the Dolphins at minus 11.75 points per game. So if we rank these teams, largest to smallest, the Ravens at 13.71 had the largest margin. And then the Patriots, you know, even though they went 10 and 6, still at 11 points, but they played in a bad division. And then our Super Bowl champion, the Chiefs at number 4. The Cowboys, remember, they were towards the bottom of our ELO ranking, but number 5 in raw margin. But I think that will change once we adjust for their schedule. But then when we look at the home away split out, the home team's only won by an average margin of 0.09. That's pretty much nothing. So not that pronounced of a home advantage here in the NFL. And in this case, the margin difference is the same as the advantage. So we can just uh, get rid of this. All right, so we're going to do our first round of adjustments. So we're going to go back into our macro editor. And we're going to go to the adjustment round one. And the question is, do we really need to change anything? Well, we'll see. So before we get going, one thing I want to do is change the formatting of these cells to a number, not a percentage, just so we're not shocked. All right, so to be honest with you, the structure of how the macro is set up, really, we shouldn't really have to change anything in the adjustment round one macro. It should work as it is. Let's just see if that's the case. Because we're not changing the structure of the file, and the calculations are pretty much the same. So let's see what that looks like. All right, when we add in the next round of adjustments, everything looks right. You know, the Patriots and Cowboys, remember how we said they played a bad schedule? Well, they were adjusted downwards. The Chiefs and 49ers, remember in our ELO method, they played a stronger schedule, so they're adjusted upwards ahead of the Patriots. So if your macro is right, you shouldn't have to change anything in adjustment round one because the structure is still the same. That's why this video isn't going to be as long as the last one because it's really not much to change. The structure and framework is still the same. I would imagine in the next videos where we're going to start to see a little bit more changes, but here all we're really doing is converting win percentage to margin. And in that case, adjustment round two is going to be the same as well. Shouldn't be much to change, so let's see what that looks like. All right, so round two of adjustments. The Ravens are still at the top, but adjusted more and more down. And the Chiefs, the Super Bowl champ at now number two. The 49ers, 10.73, still at number three. The Cowboys, look at them. They went from 5 in the raw to 10 in the second round of adjustments. So with that all in place, we can go back to this. So we didn't have to clear these columns out, but we did. So this is for those of you starting on this video, I guess. So the margin rank for the raw method equals E2 dollar sign E2 colon dollar sign E dollar sign 33. So you want the whole column selected at 0. And this will rank the column 5 values, smallest to largest. And then we can just copy and paste this, change this to G2, change the E to G, drag it down. And then we can uh, copy and paste that right here. And we're going to change this to I2, I2, I33. And then we can drag it down. And then the raw to adjusted change equals I2 minus E2, and then we can format this to a number, and then equals L2 minus J2. How, how many changes in position did the team make? All right. The largest change when we adjusted was the Texans. They started out ranked 20th 
at minus 1.33, but when we added in the adjustments, they went all the way up to 12, and their margin difference went from negative to positive, minus 1.33 to 1.74. The Seahawks, Rams, and Browns also at the top. But the worst teams, the Cowboys and the Patriots, you know, two teams that played bad schedules, made some pretty significant drops, I guess, in terms of raw number, but the rank didn't really change that much. I mean, five to nine, two to four. The Eagles went from 12 to 18. So that's how the raw numbers look like. And then rank position, the Eagles and Colts drop the most. I know that's in green, uh, but go with me here. The Eagles, Colts, and Chargers all dropped six spots. But then the Texans grew eight spots and the Falcons and Seahawks four spots. Remember the Panthers in our earlier video had the biggest gain when it came to wins and losses? Well, margin, they still gained, but not really at the same time. 29th to 26th, so still towards the bottom, but not as bad. And remember the Bengals, they are the worst team raw percentage-wise in our first video. Well, they went from 30th to 28th, so they also improved. And remember from our last video, strength of schedule is simply the round two adjustment number equals rank H2, comma, dollar sign H2, dollar sign H, dollar sign 33, zero, to calculate who had the best strength of schedule when it came to margin. And obviously that is the Texans because they had the biggest adjustment change, so they also played the toughest schedule when it came to margin. And then the worst schedule, I'm guessing, is the Cowboys. And we are correct. The Cowboys played the worst schedule when it comes to margins because they got to play bad teams like the Redskins, number 31 in our model. They also played the Dolphins, number 32. They played the Giants twice. They played the Jets. So the Cowboys played the worst schedule by far in our margin model, and that's why they were downgraded from 5th to ninth. All right, so what can we do with this model? Well, like we did in the last video, let's create a prediction tab. Rename it prediction, I guess. Put this right here. Let's put an away team. So let's just do the Dallas Cowboys versus the Houston Texans. You know, the worst schedule versus the best schedule in our model. And right here, we're going to do equal sign B lookup. Click on that. So D4, comma, team averages tab. Select the entire table. Put dollar signs in there. Comma. So we're doing their column I number, margin diff, so nine. Letter I is nine, false. And then we're going to copy this, put that right here for the Texans. And we'll put this column margin. And then right here we can put home advantage, assuming this is a home away game, equals league averages away disadvantage, equals league averages home advantage. And then this column is going to be called league average. Now we know the league average margin is going to be zero, but remember we're teaching ourselves good habits going forward for when it's not as cut and dry. But the league average is going to be pretty easy. It's going to be average right here, zero obviously. All right, and this one right here is going to be prediction equals E4 minus E5 plus G4 plus F4. And then the other side is going to be, you could just do minus 1 times H4, but what we're going to do is equals double parentheses E5 minus E4 plus G5, the league average, plus F5, the home advantage and it's the mirror. And that's really all there is to it. It's not as complex as the last prediction method we use for the ELO system. So the Cowboys would be expected to win a road game at the Texans by 1.68 points. So let's do another one. Let's do the worst team, the Washington Redskins, versus the best team, the Baltimore Ravens. So this method predicts the Ravens to win by about 23.76. Or how about the Miami Dolphins? versus the Kansas City Chiefs, 23.12. So you're wondering why you never see spreads this high in the NFL. Well, that's because prediction models are a lot more complex than this. So, But at least according to our simple pure points margin method, this is predicting some pretty big spreads in these hypothetical matchups. So then we also have our regression method. So right here we can fill these columns in. We can call this margin instead of win. And so right here, all we have to do is a VLOOKUP the away team, comma, select the entire grid over here. Don't forget the dollar signs, very important. The dollar signs, in case you don't know, exist because 
That way you can drag down the formula without the column structure rearranging. And then index number, so nine, and then false. And let's convert all of these to numbers. And then we can just copy and paste that with C2, and then equals F2 minus G2. So the difference between away and home. And then the margin equals D2 minus E2, seven points. And then we can just drag this all the way down and everything's filled in. So now we can build a regression with this. Go to data, data analysis, regression. And our Y range is going to be the margin. And our X range is going to be the diff. Make sure labels is checked. And let's do a line fit plot too. Perfect. So look, we have a R square of 0.36, which isn't terrible. Ideally, that'll be closer to 0.5 or higher. But like I said, this is a very simple one input model, so it's not going to be perfect. But our line fit plot is still pretty good. It's well defined, as you can see. So we can take this intercept and the coefficient over here and move it over to our prediction tab. Just put that right here, intercept, and then coefficient. If you didn't notice, the intercept usually in these regression models is always going to be identical to the home advantage. So minus 0 0.08, pretty identical to minus 0 0.09. So for the regression prediction, it's pretty simple. We use our formula. So this column will be called the margin difference. So equals E4 minus E5. And this one will equal E5 minus E4. So just the difference in these two numbers for each team. And then this column right here will be called the regression prediction. Pretty simple calculation. It's our intercept equals A4 plus the margin difference I4 times the coefficient A5. All right, for the chief side of the equation, though, it's a little bit different because remember the intercept is based on the away team's margin difference. So since we're using the home team, we're going to do an inverse of the intercept. So equals minus 1 times A4 plus a5 times i5 and there we go it's the exact inverse of this right here so according to the regression the chiefs win by 23.5 which is slightly higher than this prediction using this method over here but pretty close to the same so let's try another one let's try the uh jacksonville jaguars who are minus 7.42 in the cleveland browns who are minus 1.77 this predicts the browns winning by about 5.75 to 5.84 pretty simple but this is the pure points method. So instead of wins and losses, you're using margin. Pretty similar to the last video, but a different concept. So these first two videos have been single statistic power ratings. So only using one input, one statistic. In the next video, we're gonna branch out and use more than one statistic and see how we can combine them to make a power rating out of that. So stay tuned for video number three. Hopefully the first two videos though give you a good introduction on all of this but we're gonna start making things more complex in the next video, so stay tuned. But that wraps up the margin, aka pure points method of power ratings. So hopefully you have a lot to work with between ELO and pure points and be prepared for things getting more complex. So stay tuned to Sports Betting Truth for more of these videos. This is what I'm doing during this whole coronavirus garbage uh, for the channel, you know, because this is all about preparation and everything going forward for when sports start back up. We have all of our structures and frameworks in place ready to go. Until next time, this is Sports Betting Truth signing off.